is to show you my setup. So I work off of a laptop and I am too old and too blind to be able to mix uh, audio files or do video files on my laptop. So I um, use an old TV um, and I simply use an HDMI cord and an adapter and plug it into my laptop and it mirrors my screen, or, or you can do the other arrangement where you have two screens, whatever works for you. But it's a much better situation for me to be able to see what I'm doing, because a lot of times you need to be able to see some pretty small details. I've got my pair of headphones here, and I've given you some suggestions for headphones if you need to buy some. You can't do inner ear headphones. You have to do the ones that cover your ear, and that are pretty flat to your ear. With headphones, you really do get what you pay for. So be prepared to spend, you know, more than 20 bucks on your headphones. Um, this is, the better your headphones, the more detail you'll be able to hear when you're mixing and the better job you can do. Of course, nobody who listens out of speakers is going to uh, hear it the same way that you do, but you will create a much better mix if you have some decent headphones, okay? So we're gonna get started uh, opening up GarageBand and I'll give you a little bit of a tour and we'll start dragging in some tracks and making some things work. Okay, so I've opened up GarageBand. I'm going to create a new empty project. Um, so I'm gonna click Choose. And it's gonna ask you if you are recording something live, if you are recording uh, an instrument, and for our purposes, we aren't recording anything. We're going to mix audio files that we already have. So I'm going to click on the microphone. It doesn't matter what this part says about the input. It, it won't matter for mixing. So I hit create. And then the first thing that I want to do is get rid of this library part. So I'm going to click on this little, this is the library button. And I'm going to get rid of it because what I want to see is this, uh, this part of the program. So I've got one audio file in there, and I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate that audio file so that, or that track, it's an empty track, and I'm gonna go ahead and create several so that I already have some ready to dump files in. So I'm gonna go to duplicate, new track with duplicate settings, or command D. So I'm gonna do, about six tracks in there that'll give us plenty to take a look at. So I wanna give you just a little bit of a tour before we start dumping in some audio files. This little guy here is a metronome and that is a click track. And so um, it actually makes an audible click. And if you are recording, you're gonna to wanna to use that so that you're keeping a regular tempo. So if we're mixing and we're just bringing in files that we've already got, we wanna be sure that that is off. So I'm gonna unclick the metronome. This stuff here um, gives you your time signature, your key, and your beats per minute. Now, that can be super helpful when you're recording, particularly if you're recording from scratch with an instrument, but for our purposes, it doesn't matter. And so you can just ignore that However, you need to be sure that this is, this is the default for Snap to Grid, which will try to arrange your audio tracks um, with the tempo that you have in there. So we're gonna unclick Snap to Grid so that um, there's not an expectation of the program that things line up a particular way. Okay. Over here, we've got your basic forward, backward, stop, play, record, um, and I'm going to show you this guy uh, in just a minute, and, um, and we'll work our way through some of these. Uh, there's going to be plenty of things that you are probably not going to use unless you start getting uh, way more into the program. All right, so I think we're ready to start bringing in some audio files. And so I'm gonna click my finder window, and I've already got a folder with a bunch of uh, movie files from people's cell phones that I'm gonna go ahead and dump into this. So I simply click on one, 
and I'm going to drag and drop it. What it's going to do is open up the movie, which I'll just close, and it's going to just create a new track at, that it will dump both the audio and the video. We aren't going to worry about the video right now because I'm going to show you what to do at the end. But this is important because it's a very frustrating situation if you forget this step. Once you pull in a movie and dump it into GarageBand, it locks it. It won't let you mess with the audio. So you have to t highlight that track, highlight the track, copy it, and you can do that in the edit menu or you can do command C like you would in any other program. And then I'm going to paste it into a different track. So uh, I'm just going to command V or paste and just stick it into a different track and then I, I can manipulate it without it being locked. Okay, I don't even need to take out this track and this movie. I'm gonna dump another one in and it's just gonna dump it in right on top of it. So I'm gonna throw it in there, kill the movie, copy the track with the command C, click on a different track, make sure that my cursor is back at the beginning and I'm going to paste that one. Okay, now I'm just going to keep dumping in a couple more. Um, let's see. I want to be sure I'm getting ones that are... Copy it. And I'm going to paste it into a different track. And I'm just going to do one more here. Um... These are all different parts, and it doesn't really matter for what I'm gonna show you, but normally what I am gonna do is I am going to um, organize this by section. So I'm going to create, um, I'm gonna create a project for sopranos, a project for altos, a project for tenors, a project for basses. Um, now, I just did a classic mistake here. I didn't move my cursor back to the beginning before I pasted my file. So I'm just gonna pick it up and drag it all the way back to the front. But sometimes when you paste, if you go, where did that file go? Um, just check further down because usually it just means that you forgot to do that. All right, now I'm gonna get rid of that locked uh, um, track just by hitting the delete button. And I want to get rid of the movie too. And I'm going to go over here to this movie and just say remove movie. You do not have to rip the audio from the video in GarageBand. It, it'll do it for you. Okay, now lining up tracks. Um, I know that lots of you are accustomed to or you've taken an earlier class where you, you've got a clap at the beginning. And claps work great. But my experience universally is that Nobody ever does their clap exactly right. So it does give you a great initial visual for lining things up, but you can also just line things up by the, by the starting note. Um, that is not a reliable, um, that's not reliable just like the clap is. You have to listen and you have to be able to um, get a little further into the song to be sure that things are really lined up correctly. But just to get us started, I'm going to line us up visually by, um, by the starting note. Um, so I'm going to highlight uh, one of my tracks. And uh, this one, this bottom track, is the furthest to the right. So I'm just going to move everything that direction. So I'm going to start just by doing that kind of visually. And if I click a, in a little bit different spot, my that box doesn't obscure my uh, ability to line up the tracks correctly. Now this track is a great example because one of the things that you'll notice is that the wave the wave formations are not very big. So I'm going to click on the little scissors up here which is the editor which is going to show me a larger version over here. So when I move this um, I can get a better sense um, I'm going to put my cursor on uh, the beginning of one of these larger files. 
And sometimes you need to expand it a little bit, and I do that on my mouse just with my fingers, uh, the way you do for so many Mac programs. So I'm gonna position my cursor with the starting note of, um, oh, I'm gonna do the bottom one. And then I can, with uh, a lot more detail, line things up. Now, if I can't see it up here, then I can see it down here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna line this one up just by kind of grabbing it. You don't grab it in the bar like you do above, but you grab it in the, the upper section of the brown part. If you're up here, you gotta grab it by the bar. Okay, so this one, we're gonna move quite a bit. Okay, now this song starts in unison. So I'm gonna go ahead and, um, and push play so that you can hear it and we can hear whether things sound like they're fairly well aligned or whether things sound like they need some more adjustment. And I can play, I can do both play and stop just by hitting the space bar. So I'm gonna hit the space bar and see what we've got. I saw the light, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord. Okay, that sounds like things are pretty well lined up. So in our next section, we're gonna talk about how you um, how you make changes, how you make corrections. But one of the things that I always want to do is um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check a little bit further into the song and make sure that things are still looking pretty well lined up because um, what happens sometimes is that people will, won't come in at quite the right moment at the very beginning. But usually, if you're, if you're midway through a phrase, like on this one, I saw the light, I can check on light and see if everybody is lined up there, because usually folks get into a much better place a little bit further into the song. So let's see if we're still sounding pretty lined up a little further in. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Okay, sounds good. I do have some tracks that are a lot louder than others. And just for my own comfort, I'm going to um, adjust some of that a little bit before I try to do any more listening. Right. Okay, so one of the things that you're going to be listening for, particularly within each section, is what are the places where people are out of tempo? Where's the timing wrong? Where is somebody hitting a wrong note? Tuning, you cannot do a whole lot about but you can certainly make a lot of other changes that clean up the track and make it sound a lot better. So basically, what we're doing in each one of these projects is we are going to come up with a single track for sopranos, altos, tenors, and basses. We will then import those into a separate project and mix it from there. But we need to do some mixing within each section. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about fixing mistakes and uh, how you how you can um, how you can blend and make it all work so that your section sounds good. Okay.